How you guys doing today? Cool? Um, today I'm going to be responding to um, Alexander Perez's claim uh, that anchor babies are citizens of the United States. Um, to start, um, the opposition, Ms. Perez, uh, talks about three of her main points, which first, uh, that the 14th Amendment protects anchor babies born in the United States, second, the number of anchor babies are increasing yearly, and third, anchor babies have a positive effect on the United States. Uh, most of her evidence seems um, solid for the most part, including um, some data. However, the inferential leap is uh, the only thing in question, and that's what will be highlighted in my uh, refutation. In my response to my claim, um, I'll be stating that anchor babies are not citizens of the United States based on evidence that I'll provide in response to her secondary claims. So to start, uh, Ms. Perez talks about uh, the 14th Amendment and how it protects um, anchor babies and their citizenship. Now, when we're talking about the Constitution, um, I think a main point is that it's a living thing. It's always changing, always interpreted differently, physically, metaphorically, and uh, even through its own words. And there's only a few group of people that are responsible for interpreting um, those words in the Constitution correctly. Um, and that does happen to be the Supreme Court, obviously. So with that said, um, the 14th Amendment, in um, the perspective of the opposition being Ms. Perez, um, talks about um, how anchor babies are protected um, through their citizenship. Because in the Fourteenth Amendment, it is highlighted that those who are born on from who are born on American soil are considered U.S. citizens. Now, the reason I bring up uh, this claim is that uh, a big vibe is how um, Ms. Perez interpreted the Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, reason being that this perception is a little bit different is because in the signing statement of Senator Jacob Howard, who was one of the first to sign the bill in 1866 of the 14th Amendment. And in uh, Senator Jacob Howard's signing statement, um, after the bill was signed, uh, he stated that, and I quote, every person born within the limits of the United States and subject to their jurisdiction is by virtue of natural law and natural law a citizen of the United States. But this is where the perspective changes. He states this, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> he states this will not, of course, include persons born in the United States who are foreigners, aliens, who belong to families of ambassadors or foreign ministers accredited to the government of the United States. So this is where uh, Ms. Perez's argument lacks uh, candidacy because of the interpretation Senator Jacob had upon the 14th Amendment and why the reason he signed it specifically. Her second claim goes into a fact of the increasing number of anchor babies uh, yearly. Now, um, I won't be presenting evidence directly to uh, correlate to Ms. Perez's um, claims because due to the fact that the number of anchor babies have really nothing to do with whether or not they deserve citizenship or not. That would be more of a constitutional thing or a legal practice uh, situation. So. If the number of anchor babies are increasing yearly, that tells nobody anything but the fact that more people are sneaking in and are creating more immigrant children, or as the US like to refer to it, alien babies. So due to the fact of irrelevance, it, her, her evidence claiming that there's a 10% increase over the last couple of years of anchor babies just makes the claim a non sequitur. Now, in her third claim, she starts, talks, uh, she starts talking about uh, the positive effect anchor babies have on the United States. Now, um, she, uh, Ms. Perez, the opposition, also starts talking about GDP and how with an increase of anchor babies, there's an increase of GDP. However, logic could easily be appealed to say if there's an increase in population, there's also an increase in people taking advantage of healthcare programs, police departments, jails, and education. I'll actually be bringing more evidence upon that and state that within the last year, Medicaid has paid $2.2 billion to reimburse hospitals for unpaid alien delivery bills, as well as over 29% of education dollars are being used according to the fact check link um, listed in my bibliography if 
you want to check after, 29% um, of education dollars are being used to teach anchor babies. And with education currently at a financial problem, it seems like anchor babies are spending a lot of the tax dollars without having their parents pay to contribute. And the parents which are, <coughs> which some happen to be criminals, are, um, are jailed and are, have, they, are, have the taxpayer dollars be used to hospitalize them in these jails. So with that said, I hope I've convinced you that Ms. Perez's argument lacks both candidacy, statement, and, con and saturation in her argument due to her second claim as well. Thank you. Right, the structural stuff starts off pretty well. On the first point, I think you've got an interesting counterclaim based on an interpretation of a contemporary of the uh, 14th Amendment who perceived it a little bit differently. Um, there's not really much discussion of what the uh, grounds were that the advocate used on this particular point. I think that you've got an interesting quote from uh, Senator Howard in back in whatever it was, 1866 or 67, whenever these things were uh, being passed. And I thought that, uh, that it did seem like there was a codicil built into his understanding of what it meant. I don't know if that's ever been a legal interpretation that's been upheld. And uh, you mentioned the Supreme Court or the arbiters of those sorts of things. You never mention a, any court cases uh, that uh, address that particular issue. So you've set that up as a, uh, you know, that, that, that there's some variation in what this really means. You could either make the argument that said the courts haven't determined this yet, or that they have determined it uh, and it's not applicable, or that the uh, actions that the court have taken were mistaken. But you don't really say any of those sorts of things. You just kind of say, well, that was not the understanding of the you know, of one of the senators who apparently voted for it uh, back then. I, 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 li I mean, I like that argument. It's an interesting point to make. It just isn't developed very much. Uh, your response on the second point is basically a relevance argument. You're dismissing it as being relevant to the main proposition as whether or not they are, in fact, uh, citizens. And I thought your answer is probably accurate. Uh, the number doesn't really change whether or not the legal status is the same. So I thought that that was a pretty effective response on that point. But I think you could probably make the same point on the third point as well, uh, but you also choose to engage in that argument by talking about whether or not there are, in fact, sufficient benefits, and you begin to try and quantify what some of the negative consequences are. And I thought you did a, a pretty good job of that, <coughs> identifying uh, some of these costs. One of the things that you might do, and this might also apply on the first point as well, is talk about uh, the very notion of anchor babies. Are they babies that are born to people who are living here, uh, whether they are undocumented or not, and then brought up here, or are there in fact a substantial number who are, living, who are born here and then they're being used to gain access to the country for instance, you know, when they say, well, we, we, our child's an American citizen and now we want to be uh, given access to the country also, well, then that seems to suggest that it's not really about that child's citizenship that's important. It's about the family's desire for citizenship. And if there are people, for example, I'm, I'm not making the argument. I'm just telling you stuff that I've heard. If there are, in fact, a tourist industry where pregnant women are arriving in the United States for the very purpose of giving birth here, then I think you've also got a good argument that would apply to that first point. And then the cost issue on the, on the third point you know, seems even more reasonable to make. It says, look, uh, 
everybody wants kids to be educated, everybody wants people to have health care, but we're paying for people who have just arrived here for the purpose of taking advantage of those kinds of things, and then I think you can you know, make your argument a little bit more effectively that way. But I thought you had the right responses on the second and the third points too. I just think you need a little bit more on that first point. All right, thank you.